Well, good, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop, and it's time once again to say, just look at all that stuff. We're back on the kitchen counter. I've got some projects that I have finished. A few of these things you've seen, some of the things I'm keeping, and you might be surprised at what I'm selling, so make sure you watch to the end of the video to find out what am I gonna keep and what am I gonna sell. Let's jump in first and talk about the Catalonian. There's no N. I was thinking cantaloupe, I guess, and I don't even like cantaloupe, so I don't know why I was saying Catalonian, but it's Catalonian, and of course, I do understand that reference. Beautiful pieces of glass, which looks very modern, and yet it was made in the 1920s, believe it or not. They were imitating the ancient glass of Spain. And more than one company produced glass of this uh, of this nature. Uh, in fact, oh, five or six companies made similar glass. These are just little berry bowls, and they will glow under a black light. They have a semi polished semi polished pontal underneath. Um, this is the first. These are the first examples I've ever found, and I think. It may often be overlooked because it really looks nothing like 1930s depression glass, but it is. And I suppose, uh, you know, you either like it or you don't. Made by the Hager Pottery Company is this wonderful console set. And it's a really vibrant yellow. I think probably all the lights here is washing the yellow out. Let's move that light back a little bit. It really is a lovely yellow color. Make sure you go on the uh, Old Curiosity Shop website to see better pictures. I always say that. It looks a lot like a lily pad with a flower on top, whether it's a lotus leaf or just a lily pad with a lily pad flower, I'll let you decide. Those are the two candle holders <clears throat> and the flower bowl, the center bowl, console bowl. So there's the whole set. No chips, no cracks, no crazing, and a really nice sort of... Uh, Oh, I guess almost like an eggshell finish. I don't know if it's 1940s or 50s. I don't really think it's any newer than the 1950s. It's nice to have Hager USA on the bottom, as well as a nice upside down, because that's how I'm holding it, a Hager foil sticker. And so there's the console bowl, the flower bowl. Yeah, I think my lights are a little too bright. My lights are too bright. Give me just a second and I'm going to pull back on the lighting here a little bit. Did that do it? Nope, that did it. That did it. Uh, yeah, you hear Perry Como out in the living room, which is a little different. I'm kind of getting mellow this afternoon. It is Friday. So I'm chilling out with Perry. I think that's that lighting is a little bit better. You can see the yellow in that console set. Now this is pottery again. My poor old wax candles are not included. The Who's Glass Lamps. Who's X. Talked a lot about them. There they are. I finished the rewiring and that's all I had to do. The original sockets up under there are in good shape. <clears throat> and this is a this is definitely a yellowish, greenish. This is really somewhere in between Vaseline and Jadeite. There's uranium in it, and it has this wonderful uh, caramel swirl, almost like the ice cream. What is it called? Carmelo? You know, with the swirl, I always get the spoon and dig all that caramel out first, and then I'm just left with vanilla. Uh, made in the 1930s in Pennsylvania. By the Who's Glass Company. I'm not. You're not going to get the shades with it, of course. You know, I, you've seen these shades. I recycle them constantly. There's a better. And um, what's really neat about these is because this glass glows under black light, you can put black light light bulbs in these and light up your uranium glass display. And the lamps will 
glow as well. We'll turn the black light on in a minute and let you see it. But you can see I have got them rewired and we go back here and uh, you're going to get the old Bakelite plugs. And as you know, I, I go the extra mile and the extra expense and go out and I buy the reproduction silk a rayon gold colored cord, which is very similar to what would be on these when they were new. I don't like plast modern plastic electric cord on, it, on antique lighting. Details! Mm-hmm. So there, there they are. Now, again, at the end of the video, I'm going to tell you what's for sale in the old curiosity shop. I might have already tipped my hat on that. I was thrilled to pay $30 for this wonderful Philco radio in a nice Art Deco cabinet with the, uh, with the streamlined uh, rounded sides here, waterfall if it's on the top, on the front. And we'll zoom in here and we can see, now this is considered a portable radio, believe it or not, with the handle on the top. And you have the added expense you paid for the push button function on top. You could get this same radio, same cabinet, without the push button function and it was a little bit cheaper. So this was a little more expensive. And you could tune into, uh, you know, WBZ Boston, WJZ, um, KYW, KDKA. Uh, put all of your little stickers in there. And then this button here, of course, uh, is if you're going to use the, the dial. So we have a nice... A nice dial here and off off three of the original bullet they're called bullet knobs those knobs those three knobs are worth what I paid just for the radio we have standard broadcast and police band which was something popular at that time and you can see it has the original finish and it's in great shape this was made in 1939 released in the fall of 1939 as a 1940 model. They used to do that with radios and Victrolas and automobiles and refrigerators. You'd see this around Christmas time uh, advertised in the magazines in, uh, in 1939 and they'd say announcing the new 1940 Philco. There it is. It's a six tube set. I have done nothing to it yet. Um, I haven't even turned it on. And you're saying, what? What do you mean you haven't turned it on? Well, I've told you many times before, when you get an old radio like this, don't plug them in and turn them on. They probably don't work anyway. And even if they do work, they're not going to work for long. They've got to be restored. You've got to go in and shotgun most of the capacitors, recap it. Tubes are usually okay. Not always, but... You, you have to go in and do the electronic work on it or you'll really, you can cause damage to them. Not necessarily irreversible, but you just don't want to plug these in until they've been restored. Uh, that's going to go in my own personal collection. Uh, maybe someday I'll get it all fixed up and put it up for sale. That set fully restored in good original condition sells for close to $200. And, uh, so that's that. Okay, I still have not listed my little, uh, 1930s deco bar glass, shot glasses yet. So, let's just skip those, because I've talked about them and you don't want to hear me. Look at this. Do you remember, was it last summer? I think it was a year ago. I think it was last summer or the summer before I bought one of these. Um, well, I happened to go back to the same dealer and I talked him out of another one. Uh, these, well, okay, made in Czechoslovakia before the war. That's before the Second World War. So we're in the mid-30s, mid before the, the German occupation, the mid-30s to late-30s. These were exported from Czechoslovakia into the United States as just white uh, porcelain and then they were decorated in a factory in New Jersey and then a bunch of these were in storage new old stock and uh, they cleared out 
the warehouse, it took quite some time, and several of these appeared. Uh, this is the, this is, uh, I have, I bought one to sell, I bought one to keep, and I was able to get another one here to sell. And so, there's the made in Czechoslovakia underneath. It was not made in 1854. <laughs> That's a mold number or some kind of production number or whatnot. But we can see made in Czechoslovakia. I know I'm out of focus. And then gilded here in the U.S. It's a little ring uh, holder, a little trinket holder to put on the, on the lady's dresser and the ring or the gentleman's. And you can drop your ring, your false eyeballs, and your false teeth right in there at night. Okay, that's wonderful. And uh, it's in perfect condition. Look at her hands there holding up this little little dish. She's wonderful. She's as Art Deco as she can be. Typical Art Deco styling to the hair, the slanted eyes, the elongated neck. Every, every this is what you saw in the 1930s when the female figure was being uh, published in advertisements and so forth in that Art Deco style. So I love her and you can love her too. Made by the Lee Pottery Company. Uh, this is Umbertone and they did this for Farber uh, Ware, Farber Brothers. And they made, Lee made the pottery in this Deco style with these tulip crocus things. And then they would they made it for the pottery for uh, Farber Brothers, Farberware, and then they would put the pierced metalwork uh, on it. And I think there were coffee pots and creamers and all kinds of bowls and things that you could get with this Art Deco style, the little basket. It's very 1930s and very geometric. We can see the temperature where I am right now is a lovely 73 degrees. Of course, that's indoor. Uh, in, in here where I am. And that's just a, an Art Deco uh, house thermometer there. Indoor thermometer. Deco style in a Bakelite cabinet with wonderful chrome feet on the bottom, glass on the front, and, and it's very stylish, very 1930s. Uh, Hercule Poirot would love to have that in his office. Speaking of Poirot, wouldn't he love this telephone as well? Made by our friends, the Northern Atlantic, uh, I'm sorry, the Northern Electric Company in Canada. You saw me uh, when I bought this, oh, uh, about a year ago. I paid either $60 or $70 for it, and I was thrilled to do so because of its condition and its rarity. The condition is unbelievable. There's, it's a Bakelite cabinet. There is not a chip or a crack to be found anywhere. That's amazing. The Bakelite is shiny and new. I promise you I didn't just coat it with lemon oil to fool you. We can see the Northern Electric right there. Canada. Look at how deco the handset is. We have patent dates here and I believe the latest patent date on here might be 1935. And I can never get... okay. So I think we're... I think you can't see it but I can see it and it does... it's telling us 19... Uh, 1935. A couple of the things I want you to notice on the handset here is that is a brass insert right there with a with a the mouthpiece there. Do you see that? That's brass. That cost you some extra money. And the dial on this telephone is brass. That cost you some extra money. Who remembers? this sound well we had rotary phones when I was a boy of course you did too and aren't they great 
What's so special about this one? You may have already figured it out. It's not black. It comes in what's called burl walnut. I don't know if it's showing up in the video, but you paid extra for this finish. It's a mottled brown. There you can see see in the Bakelite. Almost like very much like in the old radios. And you don't find very many of these mottled brown uh, imitation burl walnut radio uh, telephones. You had to special order it and it cost you some money. So this was probably on the desk of the executive. You don't need a separate subset with this. There is a bell inside of it. I just uh, could not believe it when I, when I found it. And again, the condition on that is really unbelievable. I paid $70 for it. It is up for auction in my uh, in my shop and it has uh, within minutes it got its opening bid. I put an opening uh, requested bid of $169 and got the bid instantly. I have seen this telephone sell for between five and seven hundred dollars fully restored. Uh, this one what has to be done the cord is good from the receiver to the phone itself. Someone cut the line here to the house. That can be replaced and you can have a modern uh, what a, a plug to put on there if you want to use this as a landline. But you would have to have somebody do that for you or, or, or order it or get some antique telephone person to actually do that. Um, okay, so that is the picture frame. Also, I think you've seen that, so forget that. What am I selling? That's up for sale, as you know, in the old curiosity shop. And so is the wonderful Czechoslovakian ring holder, trinket holder, 30s deco. I'm going to hold on to the radio for now. Haven't put the tumbler, the shot glasses on yet, but the Ca Catalonian glass is up for sale as well as the Hager set and the Who's Glass lamps are for sale right now in the old curiosity shop. So let's turn the black light on and let you see these things glow. And in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and say thank you for watching. Have yourselves a safe weekend. And I'll be back with some surprises in the next couple of days. Mm-hmm. I will. And we've got to do another household hint, don't we? And a name that tune and a what's up with that. We're going to come back to that really soon as well. Stay tuned to see the uranium glass glow. But I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop saying thanks for watching and so long for now. Wow. Isn't that something else? Whose glass lamps, vanity lamps from the 1930s and Catalonian depression glass from the late 1920s. It's full of uranium and ready to glow on a shelf near you. <laughs> I love it.